let's jump into the main part of the show, the main juicy morsel part of the show that you've all been sitting here anxiously waiting for and anticipating. What happened between Bobby Lee and Kalila and why have they broken up? And then we're going to speak about reasonings that we think behind it, hypothesize and just speak and just be funny and make a joke out of it. Because guess what? We don't know these people and it doesn't really matter. That's basically the point of it. It doesn't matter. We don't know these people. So let's make a joke out of it. Make it funny because it is what it is. People get together and break up all the time. It's not that, you know, I went on the Tiger Belly read it now and people are arguing about, oh, we should be kind to them. We should be nice. It's like, bruv, relax, man. People get together and break up every single time. It is what it is, man. Stop being fucking babies. I get it if you've got some sort of weird parasocial relationship with these people, but then that's your problem. Do you know what I mean? You shouldn't be that attached and fucking um, invested in someone's relationship to that extent extent like it's sad don't get me wrong cool because you know no one lets see anybody break up it's like no one wants to see a fucking kid get pushed on the floor or fall over or whatever it may be but sometimes if you see a woman fall over and trip in a supermarket you laugh because it's funny it is what it is <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> i know i do anyway so as you guys are aware i think most of you are aware by now it has now been confirmed i guess by this podcast title that bobby lee and kalila have broken up and they were you know the center of this channel's attention because of all the stuff that happened with brendan Schaub and annie lederman but in general if i'm completely honest i don't really know that much about their relationship i used to watch tiger belly a bit when they had their old studio then i kind of got put off by it because i guess i was just bored of the stick i realized quite soon that i get tired of comedians that have like a stick thing like Burt Kreischer is a similar sort of thing like that kind of adult frat boy thing and then Bobby Lee has that whole like lovable Asian teddy bear harmless like he's like a toddler stuck in an old man's body thing I just get tired of that shtick it gets my nerves um again and again and again like I can't do anything right I'm always this I'm always that I sleep a lot the slept king it's just I got bored of it so after they moved studios, I stopped really listening to the podcast or watching it, so I don't really know much about their relationship in that regard. But I do know that um, Kalala played a big part in Tiger Belly, played a big part in Bobby Lee, um, you know, bloody joining up with fucking Andrew Santino and doing, um, what, what's that show they do? I forgot the name of it, but you know what they do. And just in general, in terms of his career, because it felt like for a long time, he was at uh, some sort of plateau, like a stagnant. And if you, let's be honest too, if you compare it, there is some similarities between Bobby Lee and Kalal's relationship and Brian Callum and Brennan Shaw's relationship. Like Brian Callum was also kind of stagnating and a bit on a kind of, you know, just evenly coasting along. And then Brendan Shaw came into his life. They started firing the kid and they, they both sort of benefited a lot from it career-wise. And, you know, Brian, Brian especially because he was trying to become a Hollywood actor for the longest time and never quite worked out. And off the back of that, he was able to secure something that he didn't have for a long time in a new TV show and did that, you know, what's it called? Um scored and he honored oh the Goldbergs and obviously did his offshoot thing called scored so I think there's some similarities there between the both of them in that respect so in terms of a professional thing maybe it's a bit upsetting that way because you know Bobby wouldn't be here without Kalila but I'm sure in the you know at the heart of it Bobby Lee's the fucking star he's the quote-unquote talent um he's the one most people come in and tune in for towards the end of the show it felt like whenever you went on the Tiger Belly subreddit people would be complaining about Kalila anyway like they hated her and she was annoying and she that she kind of was a vibe killer but now suddenly they're broken up and everyone's crying and making it seem as if like she was fucking I don't know the female Steve Jobs or something it's a little bit extreme one and the other but anyway regardless so they did a podcast together and i guess they, they decided to announce to the fans that they're breaking up which i don't really understand why you would really but i guess if you've if the fans are somewhat invested in your relationship and you made it the basis of the show maybe you owe them an explanation but i don't really think you should personally for me even being a content creator i don't think just share everything with your fucking audience but i guess in that respect they kind of had to and if you want to kind of nip it in the bud and not have people kind of harassing you in the comments every single day maybe just addressing it outright is the best way to go about it but you know i think it's a little bit redacted personally so i think it starts at what is it 105 15 so let's move it along here they've got timestamp which is fucking amazing and we're gonna hear what they have to say about the breakup we're gonna laugh along with it make some jokes and just keep on keeping on a little uncomfortable for me. Wait here, wild card. Admit something. Okay, this is it. All right. So, do you want me to open it then? Um. Yeah. If you if you want, Bobby. Oh God, this is hard. All right. I just want to announce to everybody that Kalila and I are no longer together. Um, <laughs> it's been o not over. It's not over. I mean, in the sense that. 
you know <laughs> just in terms of optics right just in terms of optics being a comedian is fucking one of the best jobs in the world and it really has to be right just in terms of fucking life um in terms of how you get to live your life right because again not to judge anybody and everyone's allowed to do what they have to do but how does how does somebody that looks like this <laughs> end up with someone that looks like that and then how are they also in a position to be like, you know what, I'm ending it because I want to move on. Like he generally, looks, that's on some of the comments, probably didn't end. He looks really relieved. He looks kind of like, okay with it. She's still fucking distraught. Like she looks destroyed. Like she's been crying for like a week. Do you know what I mean? Like she looked, this is a woman that's clearly still invested and still feels like, fuck man, I really thought we were going to be together forever. So being a comedian is fucking amazing. If you get to be an adult fucking baby in terms of you get to kind of get indulged in all your vices and stuff, you get to kind of not really take responsibility, you never grow up. And you also get to date amazingly good looking women. And then when you're bored, you can just say, I'm over it and do a podcast and rack up the views, <laughs> eat all the AdSense and keep on moving on. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We, I want to say that Kalila is the love of my life, my best friend. Um, if, if there was a book about my life, she would be, if there was 10 chapters, she'd be four of them at least, five of them. Give me half. And I'll give you half. <laughs> if you have, yeah. Give her half the book. Um, she changed my life in so many different ways. She reinvented who I was. And... Um, yeah, um, and the reason why we're announcing that is because um, there are things that people believe online that aren't true, and I want to address those things because... You see, that's immediately where the problem was for me. Immediately the problem was for me in this relationship. It felt like, again, from the outside of looking in, it felt like these guys were in relationship together with each other, sorry, and they're also in a relationship with the Tiger Belly fan base and community and subreddit or whatever, yeah? the extended universe, whatever the fans call themselves, which is absolutely insane. Imagine being in a relationship with somebody, and I get it, it's content and your own kind of, you know, video together, your own social media together, and people kind of build a relationship, kind of build their kind of fandom based on how they kind of think of you guys together as a, as, as a pair or whatever, but... Why would people's opinions of how they view you acting on camera kind of... Why should that play into anything, how you guys actually feel about each other personally? That's absolutely weird, isn't it? Really bizarre, but... Or it also could be a thing of... It's just any excuse to kind of immediately press the button because they're both seeing it's not really going where it should be going. Maybe that's the case, but I feel like mentioning mentioning the fans and what people are saying on the internet in the first minute or so of your explanation of why you've broken up is really a really big red flag in my opinion because um it's causing a lot of pain in our house um and i'm gonna start with my part in it and my part is this you know years ago kalila um had this heart condition and it started in the philippines and she, we were in the Philippines, and I had to carry her into a taxi, and we thought she was going to die. And, um, you know, a after that, you know, at home, we just would have the ambulance at our house two or three times a week. We'd always constantly go to the hospital at five in the morning. Um, and at that point in my relationship with her, I changed a bit, and it became... Um, I was just worried about her keeping her alive. And I think that it shifted the relationship. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so, a lot of the sexual stuff that I felt before that had diminished. And it became more of a um, caretaker. Not caretaker, I guess it's a terrible word to use. But like, I was. What? So she has a heart condition. It now, oh God Almighty, men can be so selfish, man. Because it felt like, again, from the outside looking in, it felt like Kalala was like, 
Bobby's surrogate mum or something, right? She was like a, a, a girlfriend, a fiance, whatever, and also a mum. She basically looked after him because he couldn't do anything on his own. It's kind of a running joke about how he can't do this, he can't open a computer, can't, like all these things. I don't really think that are endearing. If you're a 50 year old man, you should be fucking on top of your shit, especially if you're meant to be the fucking main breadwinner and the fucking leader of a household. Like, get your shit together, do you know what I mean? But whatever. She comes in and she steps in and she kind of fills that void and is able to help him along and it kind of benefits the both of them so she's always been the kind of carer i felt like then the one moment that she gets ill and she has an issue or she has a medical condition that she needs to have someone look after her he immediately doesn't see her as a, as a sexual being anymore she's not hot <laughs> she's not desirable she's not someone that he wants to hook up with he's not like super in love with her like he was in the past like this is such a man brain thing man like god almighty extremely worried about her you know it reminds me of a little bit it reminds me of it have you watched um kirby enthusiasm the latest seasons um do you know when um i forgot the lady man what's the fucking really hot asian lady she's an actress and i think she was a model for a period of time she's in it in one of the older seasons and i think she's dating um larry david in the show and in larry david's character in the show um he's walking in a room and he doesn't he doesn't see that the the way he's walking there's a window there he thinks it's a doorway and he walks into it and he smashes it right and it makes him look like he's like losing his marbles or he's got alzheimer's or he doesn't have function or doesn't control his functions and he immediately turns off the, yeah lucy Lou, immediately turns lucy low off and she kind of doesn't see him as a sexual being or somebody to to hook up with anymore this is the same thing he did to her <laughs> and when you're in that kind of situation you know um, a lot of that energy and it, it changes the relationship at least you know and then um i began to um fantasize about other w women i would watch porn every single night and you know and this is over years of this and she i just distinctly remember there were moments where we would sit down and she would be crying going what happened with us um, there's no intimacy. Um, I feel like you don't know me anymore. I want you to get to know me again. And I, a lot of times I would do false promises like, trust me, I'm just going through a phase or I'm working on it or whatever. And I would, um, you know, basically shrug it off and s tell her that I was going to deal with it in the future or whatever it might be. But this is years of this I mean, in fact there were times where she would plan vacations so that she could rekindle some of the magic that we had lost you know um one time we were in H hawaii to do that it was the first time i went to hawaii that wasn't a work related thing and um i think we we tried you know um and it it looked optimistic maybe sometimes but um I don't know, you know, I, I, I have to say that, you know, a lot of it was my fault, you know, um, and, you know, I was in therapy talking about it. We did Big couples therapy now. and stuff. And um, so it eventually got to the point where obviously people have needs, you know, and she had needs and we didn't know what to do because of many things. Number one, like I said, you know, we literally are best friends. We spend 24 hours a day together we created tiger belly together we have other things that we want to do um, we have seven animals we live together uh, her niece lives with us we're a family and there's a you know a warmth in the house and um it feels like a family like i said but um but it got to the point where you know it's like what else if i'm not going to change and i'm not you know and I, I, trust me, I tried. Um, <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't try at all. <laughs> He's fucking awful, isn't it? <laughs> Don't get me wrong. It looks like from the from what I've been able to glean so far, it looks like the relationship ran its course. And I don't think that's a big deal, personally, for me. I'm not really somebody that's... um. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing when people break up sometimes. I think not all relationships are meant to last forever. 
And some relationships are meant to be for the period of time that they're meant to be for. So if you're with somebody for a period of time and you get some benefit from it, both of you guys in terms of professionally, in terms of spiritually, sexually, whatever it may be, you grow up as a person, I think it's a good thing. Especially sometimes if you end up having kids, right? You're able to kind of look back on it and think, oh, even though we're not together, look at these amazing kids we brought into this world. Fucking cool to see, right? Great. Especially if you kind of be able to split up on amicable terms. I think sometimes just staying for the sake of it and staying because you're comfortable is usually sometimes a bad thing. Um, but I also don't think there is any need to kind of attribute blame all the time and say, this is why it ended or whatever. It could just be, this is where it kind of ran its course. We both kind of like noticed that. And instead of trying to brutalize ourselves in terms of trying to make it work, let's just split up amicably, stay friends somewhat and go on from there. And who knows what might happen in the future? Do you know what I mean? Um, but this idea that he's, that what he's saying is nuts though. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to basically saying, this is how I am. I'm not going to change. So if she can't handle it, she might as well just leave me, which effectively means anybody that he gets with is going to be, have to somehow endure because I think he might have, did he change for a little bit? I don't know if he did. You're, you're going to, you're going to have to somehow accept this guy for exactly what he is. And not want to change any bit of him, which is impossible because women's intrinsic urge is always to change a guy, right? Even the slightest bit to kind of add something, whatever it may be. Um, I don't know, but that's just a wild thing to say. I mean, I'm not going to change, but anyway. So it got to the point where I was like, you know, we threw out suggestions and things that um, would, you know, I was mindful about how... It, Kalila can maybe, you know, um, get her needs fulfilled, right? And I threw out suggestions, maybe you should see somebody else, you know what I mean? And, you know, I said it a couple of times. Um, I also want to address something that happened with um, my brother. And this is a very sensitive thing for me. Um, ah, okay. So he's the one. That's the thing as well, to be honest, because I think... A lot of fans were debating about it and saying that Kalila was the one that was being the whore. Or I don't know what happened. What's with the t what's with the Tiger Belly fan base completely hating Kalila? I don't really understand this. I'm, maybe there is some sort of manipulation involved, but for it to look like I don't know why everyone thinks that she came in with this long game to stay with this guy for ten years and swindle him out of money. It just it seems so far fetched. But anyway. Um, the narrative was that, oh, she was the one that wanted the open relationship so she could go and fuck the guy in Hawaii. But Bobby Lee's saying that with his own mouth, I was in a bad place. I wasn't necessarily being the most affectionate person in the world. Maybe he started to not fall, maybe he was at that point, you know, falling out of love with her and not loving her in that way the same anymore. And he just didn't kind of maybe admit his feelings. And then he basically suggested that she should see somebody else. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, you can't then start catching feelings when they do. Like, that's completely selfish, in my, in my opinion. But hey. You know, anyone listening to Tiger Belly and are familiar with um, our podcast knows the things that have been going on. You know what I mean? It's been a nightmare, you know. Um, so essentially, my brother said some things to a random person um, that were not true. Um, he has, to me personally, apologized you know I mean? for me. You know what I mean? Um, and I think he knows his mistake, but I don't know fully, you know what I mean, how he feels. What? So what are they talking about? Did Stevie, did Stevie Weeby divulge some like personal bedroom relationship stuff about them to somebody else? And then that's how it got spread on the internet. Is that what you're trying to say? I'm confused there. What what, what is this? What does this Stevie? What does Stevie have to do with anything here? But um, essentially, you know, he said things like, you know, Kalila was a gold digger. Um, oh. I have to say that to people listening, um, that you know, when I met Kalila, I had no money. You know, I was making. I can tell you what I was making on the road. I had no. Okay, 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 okay. So. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. I'm a little bit confused here. I might go back on my statement. If what people are saying about the gold digger thing came from Stevie and he's meant to be Bobby Lee's brother, 
and they're also very close. It's not like they're not they're not like estranged brothers. You know what I mean? They like they they hang out with each other. They've been on the show a bunch of times. There's probably some truth to it. I don't think it's all the way true, but it's probably a truth, an element of truth to the idea that some people around Bobby were saying, basically, why is this woman around you? Do you know what I mean? You are fucking revolting in every way, shape or form. You probably shouldn't have somebody that looks like that or is that nice of a person be next to you because there's nothing, you know, that much of a catch about you. And the only other reason that she could be here is because of the money. Maybe that's what the conversation was had around his group. So even though he's not admitting it himself, maybe he partook in that conversation in terms of, you know, is she here for the money and stuff, which I think is really unfair personally, because, you know, even if she was here for the money, he benefited a lot from it because he made tons of money. She's benefited also because she's got her own podcast and she's thriving. But, you know, I mean, this whole idea that that's actually a bad thing is really bizarre and kind of immature because, you know, he wasn't anywhere in terms of fixing his life when she before she met him anyway so i don't know very bizarre but also it goes to show man these la comics la in general is just a fucking cesspool of fucking horrendous people in it even bobby lee's brother is out there fucking um you know bowed mouthing him bad mouthing his girlfriend gossiping spreading rumors and whatnot that's all getting back to the fucking subreddit people are then going to attack halilo they're attacking him like these guys are fucking awful even to family members bruv family members these guys are fucking insanely horrible like the worst of the worst man the worst other prospects of cash the only amount of money i was making is through doing a b room sometimes and getting not a door deal but getting like you know hey yo let's stop the cap robert kim stop the cap she's not hot he can get better looks wise let's stop the cap let's stop the cap let's stop the cap we're all you know for the men in here let's stop the cap come on let's stop the cap um <laughs> a guarantee you know so it's not, it's not, I mean, compared to, to all my peers and stuff, really. And when I met her, you know, she kind of reinvented my thing. I made my money with her. She has her own money, right? The, all the things that I have in my life, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I see a chat here from fucking that absolute dweeb, looseless. What's he saying here? I wonder where you got this idea from and the short take starting this identical stream 30 minutes right after I ended my live. Nice bukkake goggles also. Yo, my dear Looseless, bruv, no one's checking for you, fam. I have no idea when you start your lives. I don't care where you start your lives. I don't care if your lives start in your toilet. I don't care if they start in your mom's bedroom. I don't care if they start outside where you fucking live. No one's paying attention to you, my friend, at all, zero. And me fucking connecting Brendan Shaw to fucking Kaleida and their relationship and Bobby Lee's relationship is hardly some sort of fucking new fucking Elon Musk far out there idea. It doesn't take a genius to put those two together, man. What the fuck is this guy talking about? Like, honestly, starting my stream just after yours. Like, who gives a fuck about when you start your stream? Who are we? We're nobodies, man. You're going on as if like we're fucking CNN and Fox battling for fucking attention. We're fucking no ones. We're just out here chatting shit, trying to entertain our viewers and trying to pass some time to catch some LOLs. Don't take it so seriously, my friend. Fucking hell. Like, what is this? You start your stream after I start mine. Like, what? Who the fuck cares about anything? Like, what is this nonsense? Start your stream now. It doesn't matter. Put your stream link in the fucking chat now. Put your stream link in the chat. It's okay. I don't give a fuck, man. It's just a fucking piece of... We're just joking around having some fun. These guys take this... Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Like, ah, oh, whatever, man. Like, this isn't that serious. Go and watch Unique. Go and watch whoever. Like, I love everybody. Like, let's put... Let's all share... Let's all share viewers. Let's all share opinions. Let's all hang out. Whatever it may be. But let's allow it, man. Like... <sighs> direct result of meeting her and her her and i building a business together um other things have grown out of that like you know my it rekindled my acting career um you know i've, I've done well when it comes to selling things and whatnot it's been very good but um you know without her i don't know where i'd be you know um so him saying that she's a gold digger is not true she's not she never asked for anything um and unpopular opinion so what if she's a gold digger so fucking what unpopular opinion so what if kalila kuhn or khan however her surname is is a gold digger so bloody what 
This guy was fucking desolate. This guy's career was stagnating. He still hasn't have he still doesn't have a special out at the moment. Even though everyone says he's amazing doing stand up, there's still not one recorded stand up special from Bobby Lee. He still supposedly does the same act he's been doing for twenty years. He didn't really have any direction where he was taking his career at. And Kalala came into his life and I'm sure for the talent that he has anyway, he was always gonna be successful. But she has also helped and benefited from it. She's helped him and propelled his career. She's got some clout from it herself mutually beneficial so what she's a gold digger you fucking got a whole career off the back of it you're in i saw him in the film with fucking what's her face the woman from sex in the city sarah michelle geller or something is that her name or whatever her name is is it sarah michelle whatever that woman's fucking name is he's in he's in movies he's got tv shows and shit like who gives a fuck if she is a gold digger you you still come up from it like i don't understand this idea that a gold digger in this kind of situation is a bad thing it's not she she fucking boosted your career you got to have a hot woman sit next to you happen to really like you and banter with you you built this amazing show you got a great community wins a win I, I don't know man i think there's just too much disrespect put in this woman's name and i think in general maybe because i've had some communication with a few partners and ex-partners of comedians online and stuff and people have been sending me dms i feel as if the women in the stand-up comedy scene bruv they get fucking treated like shit and they're legitimately the reason why a lot of these guys have careers. They allow them to go out on tour and do whatever they want to do and finger fucking 21-year-olds in the back of toilets and shit and go on fucking, you know, what's, what they think called a mini runs or whatever those things are called, indulge with their vices, and they hold the fucking house down. Do you know what I mean? They look after the kids if they have any, look after the pets if they have any, and they get fucking treated like absolute crap. And most of them, all they want is just to be looked after. They want some attention, they want a couple of date nights, they want to fucking go on holiday, they want maybe a car here or there, some handbags, whatever it may be. And they still kind of complain. They still complain. These guys are fucking awful, man. She, he um, said um, things like he's, she's keeping, you know what I mean? me from other people or right or something like that or you know and um you know during the pandemic we didn't see anybody you know you know I'm, I'm tired of people thinking that i don't make my own decisions you know everything that i do i make my own decisions i'm bobby lee i do what i want right we and know that don't worry we know. i was super fucking scared i didn't know anything about this virus i didn't leave the house for a year and a half i didn't even go to the grocery store for a year and a half, right? And 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 I didn't see my brother. You know what I mean? I didn't see my mom, right? I didn't see anybody, right? Um and you know, I think that my, my brother thought that that was, you know what I mean, me disappearing or you know what I mean, or you know what I mean, something was going on, you know what I mean, that was like, you know, um I don't know. I don't know what he was thinking. But um yo yo yo, yo. and um just on that point, it basically goes to show that what you just said there, that the Bobby Lee family is full of just fucking, what's it, is it hypochondriacs or um, anxiety-ridden people? The whole family is full of people that suffer from some sort of anxiety. If Bobby Lee's brother was getting all these ideas that Kalala was some sort of gold-digging mastermind because Bobby Lee was afraid to leave his house because of COVID, these, this whole family is fucking, is a bit on the funny side, isn't it? This whole family is fucking nuts, legitimately. This whole family is insane. Bobby Lee, you know, Bobby Lee in his side, Kalila gets sick and he immediately starts, stops having a boner for Kalila because he's looking after her. And then Stevie Weeby immediately gets these mad thoughts that Kalila is some sort of witch that's willing to break up the family and steal all his money and all this sort of stuff and write him out of wheels because he doesn't want to leave his house voluntarily. Like... <laughs> Yeah, with all that stuff that he said, I don't, I don't know if you guys, even if people even listening knows, but you know, he had texted some random person his gripes that were absolutely unfounded and not true, and people have taken that and ran with it online, and it's really hurtful to Kalila. It's hurtful to me. You see, I don't like this then. And again, I'm not gonna, I'm trying, I'm not trying to give Brendan Schaub any credit here, but they made it seem as if Brendan Schaub started the room on his own. They made it seem as if fucking BGL, that fucking coke-ridden um, freak, they made it seem as if he just started rumour on their own. So basically what the point is here is that that rumour about Kalala being a gold digger and all this sort of stuff and a whore or a slut or whatever it may be, it started from fucking Stevie Weeby, babe. That's what it started from. 
he started a rumor because I guess he was been speaking about himself with his friends or Bobby in general and stuff in secret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These people are all gross, man. Like, no one comes out of this looking well at all, ain't it? Really. Um, and I just wanted to address it. So uh, you know, just and uh, you know, I'll, I'll, another thing that I want to add is, you know, I was blatantly flirting with other people and there was things that she caught me in that were like you know I mean, kind of um you know it, it took her aback that i did some lying you know what i mean and there were things that you know tiger belly fans all you guys have been uh, uh, there's a subreddit i think on there where they just pe- post like mad horrible things about kalila and clips of her saying some you know some whorish stuff or whatnot or just being funny whatever it may be to make her seem like she's a bad person all of you guys i hope you're watching this fucking stream or i hope you've watched this podcast because clearly this was somewhat of a toxic relationship they both were clearly at a point in their relationship where either they work it out or they break up and they broke up, but Bobby Lee played a huge part in the breakup, friend. A huge part in the breakup. My man's out here talking to other women. Um, he's he's out here flirting with other people. He immediately didn't have a boner for her because what she dared to get sick or to have a heart condition, whatever it may be. She they're fucking spreading rumors about her being a gold digger behind the scenes. Like, come on, man, come on. Let's be fair. She might be. She might not be the best human. I'm not saying she's fucking Mother Teresa out here, but the way you guys are making it spin as if like Bobby was the nicest, sweetest man in the world and he can do nothing wrong. When in fact, he's the one that fucking started <laughs> the cheating first, especially the, maybe the mentally, the mentally kind of not being around kind of cheating thing first. It's like, come on, man, you guys are horrible. Anyway, um, big up the super chat from Mr. DBZ fan, um, five pounds. Thank you, friend. Really do appreciate it, brother. Thank you. Slap. Loving the stream so far, Izzy. I went to see four tonight, but your commentary is way more entertaining. You got me creasing, man. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. As DSP would say. Thank you. As DSP would say, yeah. <laughs> None of this was like an anomaly or is that the right word? Or you know what I mean? Out of nowhere. You know what I mean? It's a reaction, right, to my behavior. Um I've done a lot of growth in the last six months and, and changes. Um, I put some hard boundaries down and um, I don't really give a shit to be honest with you what people think um, I I don't give a fuck um, yeah you do you started off the first minute of the fucking explanation you started talking about the internet and about social media what people think about your relationship you care man come on don't don't lie you care and the people that are, that are saying shit about me in, in this, uh, fuck go fuck yourself I mean because you don't know my, this is my personal life and this is our life, and it's like you know they're very, being very mean toward Kalila, and I've had enough of. Oh, that. you fucking cunt! You know why they're being mean? Because you and your bo- brother started a fucking rumor that she's a gold digger. That's why they're being mean. <laughs> These guys, man, this the lack of accountability and self awareness is fucking non-existent. You know, um, it's unfounded, not true, um, and um, she's a good girl, and I love her very much. And um, I wish people would stop, you know? I really do. Um, <laughs> Gotta cry. So that's pretty much everything in a nutshell for me. I, um, She's got that ugly Kim Kardashian cry in it, man. God almighty, man. This is fucking brutal to watch. <laughs> oh. Bro, this is all Brendan Shaw's fault. This is all Brendan Shaw's fault, man. He called her a good girl like he was fucking complimenting a fucking horse. Do you know what I mean? Checking her teeth, yeah. She's a good girl. Good girl, this one. <laughs> oh. um, like, like, I mean, I love Kalila. I love my brother as well, you know? Um, he hurt me. He hurt me. It was painful. But Brian Callum threatening him on the phone to ruin his career, saying he's going to fucking roundhouse kick him. And then fucking Stevie, we'd be spreading rumors that Kalala's a whore and she's a fucking <laughs> gold digger. <laughs> Honestly, in LA, you really have no friends. And even these people in the room here, that's the funny thing about LA. All these people in the room are all paid. They're not even friends either. So it's like, oh, they're a family. They do this together as a family. No, they're not a family, bro. You pay these people to hang around with you. 
None of these guys will be invested in this stuff if they weren't getting paid and handsomely rewarded in that respect. It's fucking awful. You see a lot with Brendan when he's hanging around and going to different shows. Oh, me the boys, me the lads, me the crew. That's not a crew, Brendan. They're all your employees. You pay every single one of them. Do you know what I mean? Like their mortgages and their rents and their fucking ability to take their wives and girlfriends and dogs out for walks and stuff is dependent on you. So of course they're going to be around you all the time. It's like, come on, man. Um... That being said, um, I know... Exactly, um, D- DXJ. They're co-workers, not friends. Exactly. Through time, things will heal. And I... But here's the good news. I, I'm, we're not stopping Tiger Belly. We're not. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're <good>. right. <laughs> it's not going to last. This ain't going to last. I predict this. <laughs> Yo, this woman is distraught. From what I know about the show, from what I know about them, again, again, I stopped listening from when they moved studios. This lady was in love with Bobby, like legitimately in love. Like she was like, think, you know, thinking they were going to get married. Maybe it was for the internet and to make it seem like they were really on it. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Let's say. But from what I could see, from being an outsider, she really was in love with him. This is definitely not something that she wanted. She didn't want to break up. So the fact that they think they're going to be able to work on it and be able to do ha ha he he's um on the podcast and laugh at stuff and have guests and whatnot is dumb they're not gonna know the, the show's gonna change to something else you have to get fired another host but they're not gonna be able to do it again no no come on no, it's gonna last i give it this show won't see the end of the year in its current format with kalila in there she won't be there at the end of the year i don't think so impossible we're good we're not stopping um i'm never gonna see anybody else in my life <laughs> okay, no, I just know I just I have no interest. Well, you're a priest. <laughs> I have no interest. I really have no interest. You know what I mean? We just need I'm a, time to heal. You don't know that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, so that's how I feel. You know what I mean? I'm not compromising. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna watch your movies. You know, I'm just telling the future. If there was a future, I'm not gonna go to your restaurant. I'm gonna eat what I want to eat. Oh, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna listen. I don't. You know what I mean? I'm gonna play 20 hours of video games if I want to. And whatnot, and so that's that. But if you have a real interest, in no, I have no interest. In, I have no interest in any of that. No, I'm just telling any girl. I'm not listening. A good I will not listen. I will not cuddle. <laughs> I will not cuddle. I will not listen, and I don't give a fuck. All right, I'm not doing any of it. I, it's it's not who I am. So that's that. It's it, this has nothing to do with, you know, what I mean, anybody else or my desires or whatever. It has to do with preserving. Tiger Belly, Kalila and I work great together. We have great ideas. We're producing another thing together. We w- we're going to do a book. You know what I mean? And you know, um, I'm super excited about the future of my business here. Um, we have a great fa- the business that she handed to you on a fucking plate, mate. And this is how you thank her. <laughs> you gotta love men, man. We're fucking unique men. If if there's one thing men can do, is um. Because I'm a full-blooded male, and I know I have the ability to be an absolute piece of shit. I know I have the ability to be a fucking piece of shit. So if there's one thing men can do really well, is immediately move on. (laughs) He's completely checked out. He's done. (laughs) Ten years, mate. Ten years. Ten years. And she's just off. Love it. Family. um, And uh, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Michael? Yeah. Do you have anything, Kyle? Um. Yeah. Ugh, honestly, who is this? I said this on it. Let's let's see who just who said this really. Let's look up again. Uh, Wells Cargo, Wells Cargo, my friend in the chat. You must be looking at a different stream to me. The stream that I'm watching right now, I can see a fucking woman that's destroyed. She looks like. Look at this. That doesn't look like somebody that's like ready and willing and happy to go to the clubs and and get bukkake or whatever people talk. I mean, that this is like somebody that's like ready for the streets. This is somebody that's still trying to process a really difficult breakup. Like this doesn't look like a happy camper, in my opinion. I don't know where you guys are seeing that she looks happy. If anything, Bobby's the one that looks relieved. He's done. Look, he's completely fine. There's no emotion in him whatsoever. He's fucking happy as a. He's happy, Larry. He gets to play computer games all day. 
uninterrupted. He gets to watch all his porn. He gets to hang out, smoke his weed, pretend he's sober. Like, do you know what I mean? He gets to do all that shit. She looks like she's fucking destroyed. Like, destroyed. <laughs> like, she's been crying for, like, months. But anyway, um, super chat time. Big up Kabul. Kablu. I think it says Kablu. Um, $2 super chat. Thank you. What's that? What's I doing? Slap. You know, the signs. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, Bobby seems to be honest here. Minds are made up. Exactly, Kablu. Exactly. Bobby's mind has been made up. He's fine with it. He's over it. He's already thinking about his next holiday. He's thinking about what he's going to eat later. What he's going to order for fucking uber eats and stuff what's Wells cargo said was Wells cargo said it's an act she's been finessing the fuck out of hit this clown this whole time do you honestly think so i don't i don't know man you guys must be watching a duff a different stream than me or maybe you guys are way more invested in the tiger belly um community and universe than i am because i'm just like a casual observer but i don't see that man i i don't know that's not what i see anyway but anyway i don't know yeah, Alexander Jones. They've broken up, mate. They just announced it. This is the podcast they recorded, I think, the other day, Alexander Jones. And they've announced that they're now broken up. Um, Kalila and Bobby Lee are no more, but supposedly they're still going to continue fucking Tiger Belly, which I don't believe. This Tiger Belly show is not going to last in this current lineup until the end of the year. No way. Yeah, I just... Uh, I'm sad, but I love you and... Brendan Schaub somewhere like, yes! <laughs> Fear Vaughn. Brian Kellen. <sighs> that fucking dumbass fucking man dragon shit he does. They're all over the moon, bruv. BGL, the coke ridden fucking steroid monster. He's happy about it too, isn't it? I see, I told you guys, I told you, he's probably going to come with his fucking podcast soon, talking about how, um, what's, his, what, what's his fucking title of his show thing called? Some people say or they say something. He's 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 gonna go on a fucking two page rant about this whole thing in it for sure, for sure. But um, yeah, it's hilarious. Um. Give me a second. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I love when people cry. It's fucking hilarious. Um, <laughs> this podcast is like changed my life i never thought that i could ever like dabble in anything crazy <laughs> yeah exactly <It's laughs> gabriel j hate us say open relationships work <laughs> bgl is going to be fucking dancing on their grave of this fucking relationship he's going to be over the moon he's going to say i told you guys i told you i told you fucking wild like you know that question earlier when you were like what's one thing your younger self would like never believe yeah is that I would even be allowed or that I would allow myself like a creative outlet, you know? 